So won't you please join me in welcoming Knox County's first ever County Executive, Dwight Kessel. When I get to a point like, everybody have a seat. <laughs> I've got a bum leg as a result of, a, you remember, may remember my bus trip downtown. It wrapped up my left leg pretty bad, and I have a hard time standing, but I'm gonna try it. Kathy stole a little bit of my thunder, <laughs> but it's good that she did the bragging and I don't have to. I want to thank her. She was a real good colleague and worker. I could depend on her. <clears throat> and I want to tell you, it's good to be here today. Of course, when you're 95, it's good to be anywhere. Today. <laughs> I guess they picked on me because they know I couldn't fight. And some of the things that we find ourselves in, we're all part of history. I used to tell my kids that don't forget the good old days because that's when you're living. Everybody starts talking about the good old days, they're in it. And we've had a good string of county mayors in Knox County, and we've got a good one now. I just like to say, excuse me, <clears throat> 42 years ago, and that's a while, I was elected county executive. And then they changed it to mayor. I don't know whether they were ashamed of us or what. <laughs> and then the job stayed the same. It didn't get any better. <laughs> One of the things that I thought about when they asked me to say something today. Kathy's dealt with some figures, but one of the things you find in county government or any government is that you have tangibles and intangibles. The tangibles are the standards, schools, libraries, roads, whatever. But the intangibles are the ones that get you and you have to learn to live with them. <clears throat> and when I say intangible, things that we don't have a whole lot of control over is COVID, population, and in the worst thing I think now is inflation. And you have to deal with those things that are more than an arm's length away from you, but they all affect you. And I think we've got a mayor who's been through part of this already, and he's gonna find more of it now. And once you set a budget, you hope that you'll be able to sustain it, but that isn't necessarily guaranteed. I found that Glenn is somebody who has shown that he is thoughtful and deliberate. He's willing to stand by his decisions and he puts the public interest first. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to call Glenn Jacobs to this microphone. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Kessel. It really is an honor to have you here. I'm also happy to welcome former County Executive Tommy Shumpert. You, know, you all might stand it up. Former Mayor Mike Ragsdale. And former Mayor, now Congressman Tim Burchett, here today as well. These are all the leaders of Knox County since this form of government began over 40 years ago. And thank you to each of you for all you've done for our county. And I'd also like to personally thank you for your friendship and support. Welcome to lunch, everyone. Thank you all very much for being here today. Before we get started, I'd like to recognize the elected officials who are here. And there are a lot of them, so please hold your applause until the end. From County Commission, we have Commissioner Deshalandi. Commissioner Courtney Durrett, Commissioner Randy Smith, Commissioner John Schoonmaker, Commissioner Terry Hill, Commissioner Charles Bussler, Chairman Richie Beeler, Commissioner Carson Daly, Commissioner Larson Jay, and Vice Chair Justin Biggs. This uh, will be the last term uh, for Commissioners Smith, Bussler, and Biggs as well. So I appreciate you all and um, everything that we've been able to do together. And this is Commissioner Bussler's district. It's also Commissioner Bussler's birthday. So happy birthday, sir. <laughs> Also from the county, we have Sheriff Tom Spangler, Trustee Ed Schaus, Clerk Sherry Witt, Register Nick McBride, Assessor John Whitehead, and Attorney General Sharm Allen. From school board, we have Superintendent Bob Thomas, Superintendent-elect John Ryswick, school board member Evity Satterfield, school board member Virginia Babb, school board member Susan Horn, school board member Betsy Henderson, School Board Member Patty Bounds, School Board Member and Chair Christy Christie, and School Board Member Daniel Watson. From the City of Knoxville, my friend Mayor India Kincannon, City Councilwoman Janet Testerman, and then also KFD Chief Stan Sharp is here as well. From the Town of Farragut, Mayor Ron Williams, Vice Mayor Louise Povlin, and David Smoke, who's the Town Administrator. From our state delegation, we have Senator Becky Massey, Representative Jason Zachary, and Representative Michelle Carringer. Also, uh, for uh, our, um, the judges, we have Chancellor Haggerty is here, as well as Judge Bill Ayler, and Judge Judd Davis, and representing juvenile judge Tim Irwin, or Mr. Richard Bean, and Mary Lindsay. And we have Congressman Tim Burchett, representing U.S. Senator Bill Haggerty as Riley Levengood, representing U.S. Senator Marsha Blackburn as Chelsea Ivins. And we also are happy to welcome Lenore City Mayor Tony Akins, Jefferson County Mayor Mark Potts, as well as Jefferson County Mayor Joe Brooks. Did I miss anybody? Claiborne County. Claiborne County, I'm sorry, Claiborne County. Sorry. Claiborne County Mayor Joe Brooks. Sorry about that, Joe. So if I miss you, as Congressman Burchett always says, it just means I'm mad at you, okay? So, but I hope, I've, hope I got everybody. So please just give them a round of applause. A lot of what this budget will accomplish has been made possible by the commitment and dedication these folks bring to their offices, and I'm very proud to serve with them. Let's also hear it from the Volunteer State Veterans Honor Guard, the Vine Middle School Choir, the Vine Middle School Choir, and uh, Reverend McClure for getting us started this morning. You know, every week I seem to run into someone who has recently moved here, often from places like New York, California, Illinois, or Michigan. They tell me they came here because of our remarkable natural assets our tremendous outdoor recreational opportunities, our proximity to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, and because it's convenient to drive to major cities like Nashville and Atlanta. But what really resonates with them is our political climate. 
lower taxes, a business-friendly environment, and more freedom to make important decisions about the things that affect their families. Invariably, they tell me, we love it here, don't change a thing. Knox County has established itself as one of the freest places in the country. We have rejected the siren song of authoritarianism and big government to which so many other communities have succumbed. Instead, we guard the public liberty with jealous attention as Patrick Henry charged us to do. And we've seen that freedom works. People and businesses are flocking here. Over the last four years, they brought with them a combined 2,500 jobs and $217 million in economic investment. Yeah, that's, that's worth it. I believe that in the heart of every human, there's an unquenchable thirst to be free, to be the master of one's destiny, to be, as William Ernest Henley wrote in his celebrated poem Invictus, captain of our soul. You'll get that chance in Knox County. Three and a half decades ago, Ronald Reagan delivered his last State of the Union address, famously describing America as a shining city on a hill. While we remember that phrase, we often forget that Reagan talked about the importance of freedom and of family. He emphasized the power of the free market as an engine of both economic progress and individual ascension. He mused about the proper relationship between a government and its people, saying it's the people who grant government its rights and not the other way around. Over the 34 years since he spoke those words, especially keeping the last two in mind, can we honestly say that we are still that place? Some have said that we must accept a new normal, remaking our society in something completely anathema to the America we know, to the values that we hold dear. Well, not here in Knox County. In Knox County, we are still that place, and we will continue to be that place. Lots of things may change, but that is not one of them. So today, I'm proposing an overall budget of $954 million that will effectively and efficiently manage expenses while providing the services our citizens deserve. I want to thank Chris Caldwell and our award-winning finance department for their incomparable work in creating a strong, responsible budget. We are very fortunate to have Chris and his team, who were recently recognized by the Government Finance Officers Association with the Triple Crown of Fiscal Management for Governmental Accounting, Financial Reporting, and Fiscal Transparency. That's awesome. Thank you all. And again this year, I am proud to report that there is no tax increase in this budget. More than two-thirds of the budget is dedicated to education. Schools have faced an especially difficult time over the past two years. I've been proud of the work they've done, particularly in keeping their doors open to provide in-person learning. We have been fortunate with some exceptional leadership in Knox County, including our school board, who conduct themselves with a high degree of professionalism. In other parts of the country, we've seen some school boards treat parents as a nuisance at best and a menace at worst. Now, while we've had our share of contentiousness here, we have not seen the outright hostility that has marked other areas. I think a lot of that is because here in Knox County, our public school system believes, as I do, that schools are not there to replace parents or to work against them, but to help children with the knowledge, tools, and skills they need to be successful. Speaking of leadership, thank you to Superintendent Bob Thomas for his longtime commitment to education in Knox County. <laughs> Bob has been a steady, calming influence at a time when we needed it most. And I'm eager to work with our inbound superintendent, John Reiswick, as he focuses on ensuring every classroom has a great educator, improving foundational skills like early grade literacy and ninth grade algebra, and preparing students for life after graduation. Those are big goals to be sure, 
Dr. Reiswick has shown excellent leadership within our system, and I know he will move the district forward with strength and humility, creating an environment that is even more conducive to learning. The Board of Education has proposed a budget of $591,500,000. It's almost $50 million more than last year, an increase of just over 9%. That is a lot of money, but I am recommending Commission fund it in its entirety. First and foremost, we want every campus to be as safe as it can be. That's why we've in this, uh, excuse me, invested an additional $3 million towards school security upgrades. We continue work on Northwest Elementary School, Sturkey Elementary, and Adrian Burnett, and the new Lawnsdale Elementary will welcome students when school starts in August. And we're addressing the needs of our fastest growing communities. The budget includes about $11 million for the addition of 32 classrooms at Hardin Valley Academy and $3 million for a new Farragut Elementary School that will serve a significant portion of K-5 through students in the Farragut area, along with Farragut Primary and Intermediate Schools. Other than their parents, there are few individuals more influential and important in a child's life than their teachers. To recognize the contributions educators make to our community, the budget is providing them a 4% raise. Now, one of the things that are most important that we can do as a community to support education is to make sure our kids are strong readers. Studies show that children who can't read on grade level by third grade are four times less likely to graduate high school by age 19 than children who can. With that in mind, early in my term, we launched our Read City USA program with the goal of ensuring that all children learn to read early and well regardless of zip code or circumstance. Knox County Libraries has taken that program over and thanks to their tireless and innovative work, thousands of Knox Countyans have logged more than two million hours of reading in the last four years. Earlier this week, we launched one of our biggest undertakings yet in partnership with schools and the Knox Education Foundation. One book, Read City. Thanks to many generous sponsors, 30,000 elementary school students teachers, faculty, and staff received a free copy of The Chocolate Touch, a children's book uh, patterned after the myth of King Midas. And the artwork of one elementary school student is being featured on our program billboards. Fourth grader Mary Caroline Peterson from Shenandoah Elementary is here today. Could you stand up for a second if you're here, Mary Caroline? Okay, well, thank you anyway, Mary Caroline, for your creativity. She's supposed to be here. For your creativity, sharing your creativity with us. It's awesome. While subjects like reading, writing, and arithmetic are absolutely essential for everyone, I believe that God has given all of us unique gifts and that everyone follows a different path depending on what those gifts are. The key to an effective educational system is ensuring that young people are exposed to as many different opportunities as possible so they have the chance to discover how best to utilize their talents. For some young people, that's college. For others, it might be the military. For many, it's the skilled trades. That's why we started the Skilled Trades Academy and Regional Training Center. What we're calling the START Center has been a major priority because it will help us attract train and retain a strong workforce in the trades. The center, which is located on Central Avenue, will cover a variety of trades depending on demand. Framing, masonry, electrical, welding, and mechanical, just to name a few. Students will be taught by experts in their fields. Programs will take four years to complete, mainly with evening classes, so students can work during the day as needed. The START Center will be open to everyone looking to learn a new trade, not just new graduates and it's a public-private partnership managed by the Associated Builders and Contractors. I can't tell you how excited I am for the doors to open and how grateful I am to the many partners who have made this dream a reality. Thank all of you for that. Now, the, the people up here in, in front, Mayor Ragsdale and uh, Shumpert and Kessel and Mayor Burchett, they will agree 
Being mayor isn't just about shaking hands, cutting ribbons, and issuing proclamations. Along the way, there's a lot of difficult decisions and surprises. And as mayor, you learn to hate surprises. <laughs> For example, on January 13th of this year, a trench collapsed in Powell, trapping two people. Thanks to some outside the box thinking, Engineering and Public Works dispatched its new jet vac truck, along with drivers Eric Hewitt, Justin Zachary, and Michael Trent, to help emergency personnel and first responders with the rescue. Ultimately, the two trapped individuals were successfully saved. Without our crew and that truck, rescue, uh, rescue teams would have had to manually clear the dirt one bucket load at a time, adding complexity and danger to the operation. Unfortunately, Michael could not be here today, but Eric and Justin are, so could you all please stand up so we could recognize you? Although most of what they do is not nearly as dramatic as a life-saving rescue, the crews at Engineering Public Works are indispensable. They keep our roads safe and passable, battling ice and snow while we're at home, warm and comfortable. They're also the ones building, improving, and repairing roads and other infrastructure. In this budget, we're allocating $16.7 million for new roads and safety improvements, like the Carter Sidewalk Project, Canton Hollow Road, and the widening and realignment of Coward Mill Road. We're also continuing the Shod Road Project to connect North and West Knox County, spanning from Callahan at I-75 to Lovell Road at I-40. This is the biggest road project in county's history, and it'll have a positive impact on the lives of our constituents. And before the decade closes, Knox County will also see major improvements on the interchanges at I-75 at Emory Road and I-40 at the Campbell Station and Watt Road exits. I'd like to thank you to Governor, Governor Lee and our state legislative delegation, as well as the Tennessee Department of Transportation for recognizing the need for these projects. And a big thanks to Jim Snowden, Senior Director of Engineering and Public Works, for his part in advocating for these projects, especially at Watt Road, yes. Especially at Watt Road, where Knox County will be participating in TDOT's local interstate connector agreement program. Engineering and Public Works, along with Knoxville Knox County Planning, is also involved in one of the most important projects that we have undertaken in the past two decades, a comprehensive land use and master transportation plan that we've dubbed Advanced Knox. Now, why is this so important? It's because Knox County faces a housing crisis. Demand for housing has skyrocketed but supply is anemic. The result is many Knox Countyans are being priced out of their own housing market and can no longer afford to live here. One of the problems is archaic zoning regulations that prohibit higher density residential development in areas where it is now appropriate. Advanced Knox will look at population growth predictions, land availability, and infrastructure conditions across the county. We'll also conduct a fiscal analysis of the safety, capacity, and multimodal access of our transportation network. All of this will provide a more realistic guide for future land use and infrastructure decisions. Some of the Advanced Knox Advisory Committee members are here today. I wanna to thank them, along with members of Knoxville Knox County Planning, our engineering and public works teams, and our constituent services department for taking on this crucial job. Thank you all. We're also working on a new five-year master plan for parks, which we expect to finish by September. Having that plan is a major requirement that enables us to accept more state and federal grants, money that we want and need to help lighten our fiscal load and keep our taxes low. This new plan will also help us prioritize park and trail system projects to make sure green spaces are serving the community the way that they're meant to. And speaking of parks, the budget includes funds for the maintenance of 62 ball fields across the county, the renovation of a number of concession stands, and the purchase of some new park equipment. We've also, <laughs> we've also started work at the McBee Ferry Park, which is a three mile site along the upper Holston that will feature river access. We wouldn't have that property or many of our other green spaces without the Legacy Parks Foundation. So I wanna thank their executive director, Carol Evans. Carol, are you here today? <laughs> S 
sorry, 0 for, 0 for 2 with recognizing people. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> But thanks to Carol for all her work. And I'm proud to say that thanks to the generous support of the Randy Boyd Foundation, we are well on our way to becoming the most dog-friendly community in America with more dog parks per acre than anywhere else. <laughs> Past several years have made it even more clear that parks and outdoor recreation are major contributors to good public health. And I'm thrilled to say that the group monitoring our local public health the Knox County Health Department, has thankfully moved beyond the difficulties presented by the pandemic and returned to their core mission of overall community health, focusing on food safety, childhood nutrition, diabetes prevention, smoking secession, and other important programs. The services, projects, and programs that I've mentioned here today, as well as many that I haven't, are provided through the efforts of the 2,700 dedicated team members who make up Knox County government. Our employees are everyday heroes who take great pride in helping taxpayers solve problems, both big and small. That's why I'm proposing a 4% salary increase for general government employees. Another large component of our budget, almost $96 million, is the Sheriff's Office. The mission of public safety is much more than just law enforcement. Officers are a positive presence on our streets and in our schools. They respond to emergencies that require first aid, CPR, and all too often, the administration of Narcan to overdose victims. They perform wellness checks for the elderly and serve as a lifeline in domestic abuse situations. Over the past several years, I've been stunned by the attitude that some parts of our country have displayed towards our men and women in blue. Thankfully, not here in Knox County. We appreciate our deputies. That's why I'm recommending that captains and below on the old pension plan, the UOP, receive a 6% raise. And then employees on the STAR plan get that same 6% increase as well as another 6% in lieu of the enhanced employer contribution to their retirement for a total of 12%. Therefore, incoming deputies on patrol will now be making $44,352 a year to start. Deputies have been telling us that they want more money up front, and that's what we're trying to do with these changes. When this proposal is approved, KCSO employees will have received a 17% salary increase as well as $6,500 in bonuses through my first term. In addition to these salary increases, we are committing just over a million dollars to purchase additional body cams, an investment that will protect both our deputies and the public. One of the most difficult things that we demand of the criminal justice system is caring for people with mental health issues. That's unfortunate and it's unfair. It's unfair to the people struggling because they're not getting the help they need. It's unfair to our deputies and jailers who are constantly thrust into difficult situations because of a systemic failure to address this program or this issue. And it's unfair to taxpayers because it's expensive and it doesn't work. To begin addressing these shortcomings, we're in the process of establishing a mental health court in Knox County. The hope is that this new court model will improve public safety, connect offenders with mental illness to the help they need, and reduce court costs and recidivism. Thank you to criminal court clerk Mike Hammond and the mental health court working group for their important contributions in bringing this program to Knox County. Thank you all. One of the best ways to ensure the success of the mental health court is to provide expanded access to mental health care. Soon, the city and the county, in partnership with area hospitals and the McNabb Center, will jointly open a 16-bed mental health facility and acute care center on the former St. Mary's Hospital site. You, you clap, man. <laughs> 
This facility should alleviate part of the strain on local emergency rooms and will serve as a place for temporary care until patients can be placed in more appropriate programs. Many thanks to Mayor Kincannon, the McNabb Center, area hospitals, and the state for their collaboration on this vitally important project. <laughs> Mental health and addiction also lie at the root of the uptick in homelessness that we've experienced. By addressing these issues, we can begin wrapping our arms around the problem long term. But because homelessness leads to public safety, quality of life, and economic development issues, there are steps that we need to take right now. We can't wait, and we aren't. For instance, Kim Bumpus from Visit Knoxville recently presented a great idea, the K-Town Connect Ambassador Program, a partnership among Visit Knoxville, the county, the city, and the Downtown Knoxville Alliance. The program's ambassadors will provide information to visitors to the downtown area, clean up litter and small graffiti, discourage aggressive panhandling, report crimes, and connect folks who may have mental health issues with the agencies that can help them. Now, when you think of Visit Knoxville, you might not think of them being involved in a homelessness initiative. After all, they're the group responsible for bringing world-class events like Bassmaster and USA Cycling to Knox County. And yes, Kim and her team do an incredible job promoting our community and telling the rest of the world, most loudly, what we already know. Knox County is the best place to live, work, play, and to raise a family. But I'm also grateful that they're always on the lookout for fresh ways to make our area even more appealing and visitor friendly. So thank you to them. You know, early in my term, I ran into a U.S. Senator from another state who was here stumping on behalf of a colleague. During our conversation, he asked me, why did you want to get involved in local government? It's hard. I laughed at the time, somewhat shocked that a U.S. Senator would tell me that my job was hard, but as time has passed, I realized how accurate he was. Local government is hard. As the saying goes, we're the ones who feel the most heat because we're the ones that are closest to the flame. That is the wrath of the public when things aren't going well. And just like the people that we serve, we too suffer the consequences of ill-advised policies emanating from the higher levels of government. And there has been no shortage of ill-advised policies coming out of Washington the past several years. And make no mistake, and make no mistake, with a few notable exceptions, like our Tennessee delegation, including Congressman Burchett and Senators Blackburn and Haggerty, these foolish, short-sighted policies have enjoyed broad bipartisan support, unfortunately. In his classic book, Economics in One Lesson, Henry Hazlitt observed that the difference between good economic policy and bad economic policy is that bad economic policy looks only at the short-term intended benefits. Good economic policy also contemplates the long-term, unintended, destructive consequences as well. For instance, you can't shut down the global economy without expecting massive economic dislocations like shattered supply chains. You can't pay people to stay at home and discourage them from working without expecting distortions in the labor markets. And you cannot, as Mr. Kessel alluded to, print trillions of dollars without expecting historic price inflation. These are issues that our community and we as Knox County government are going to be dealing with for a long time. So yes, local government is hard. But here in Knox County anyway, man, it's also worth it. Next month is Knox County's 230th birthday. Over the past two and a half centuries, we have been through multiple economic downturns, recessions, and a Great Depression. We have seen pandemics, a civil war, and two world wars. We have witnessed civil strife, social unrest, and growing pains as society changes and injustices are rectified. We have been through the crucible time and again. And look at us now. 
We are stronger and better than ever. The envy of the rest of the world. We are that shining city on a hill. And every day, every day, I thank God that I'm blessed to live here and I'm privileged to serve all of you as Knox County Mayor. Thank you all very much for being here today.